Last week was the week we reached 22 knots boat speed sailing from France to Corsica. Let's not forget about that one. We arrived late in the evening to a town called Calvi. Fed up with the society from my hometown, I've packed my things and left. Looking for some place that could become my new home, time for me to win my own nest. So we've got to meet James and Destiny. Uh, in four days in Sardinia. We're at the top of Corsica and the wind is blowing from the south to the north tomorrow. So we're hoping to hang out here for a bit but we've just arrived, anchored overnight in a place that I'd really like to go swimming. Um, have to pull up anchor, we need to get some supplies from in over here and we're gonna go down the coast, have a look at some places where we are gonna swim where, that Machu pointed out an anchor in a place whose name I've just forgotten and then bomb south again and then south again and then there's a pretty decent blow coming but hopefully we'll be in Bonifacio by then. We're in a bit of a hurry but hopefully we can cross some moss seas on. Come on. <laughs> well, I had no idea this place was just so beautiful. <laughs> wow. Look at the colour of the water. We're all going to get some work done this morning and then put the dinghy in the water and go to shore. I'm so excited. Maria Cativa, best boat I've ever seen. Christopher Columbus supposedly came from Calvi at the time of the Genoese Empire, but a lot of places in Europe we've been to claim the same thing. Calvi is a commune in the Haute Course department of France, the economy of which is based mainly on summer tourism. Also, during the French Revolution, Lord Admiral Nelson lost his eye at the Siege of Calvi. The Calvi Citadel, built by the town's Genoese governors, it has fended off everyone from Franco-Turkish raiders to Anglo-Corsican armies. Australia, lonely planet. <laughs> yeah. With only a quick glimpse of Calvi, we prepared for a day's sail down the coast of Corsica. The plan was to head as far south as we could and then head into one of the numerous anchorages before sundown. But first, we moved spots to go for a dive. There's no anchoring, but there's a very specific limit for a place where you're not allowed to anchor. Like, mask out. First, you need the sight The hang of your eyes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'll uh, take the GoPro as well. I was starting to get pretty disheartened with the lack of sea life here in the Mediterranean. When I look at the size of fish for sale in the markets and restaurants and the huge fishing vessels we have to avoid during night crossings and try to reconcile that with the barren plains of what I have encountered underwater lately, it makes me pretty dejected. Where is he? I don't like him down there by himself. Selfishly, because I personally want to see beautiful coral and spear of fish for dinner, but also globally. The top of it's at 12 metres, so you're diving down to 18 before you're even looking underneath anything. So it's a bit full on for me when I'm by myself. And hold me closer and submit me. Your powers of seduction It's not magic no, it feels I was just wondering if it was going to be protected enough or not in Girolata but just as we turn the corner I see this huge mountain over here and all the um, water in front of it is just really really calm it's just dead flat there and there's no ripples on it or anything so I think we're going to be in for a very pleasant night and a very pleasant sleep Like a bowl? A bowl? bowl? Mooring? For the night? Yeah. 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 Okay, it's possible. Um, can you prepare two lines in the front? Okay. Yeah. And one line in the back to the right side. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, how much is it? How much longer? 14 meters. Okay. 88. I, I looked it up on the internet and it was 40. Where? on the internet. It'd be better off anchoring, yeah. Not only were the moorings an obscene 88 euro a night, but we'd heard that because these moorings are so close together that the yachts will actually swing into each other and hit in a blow. This bloke's got his windscreen wipers on. Settle down, mate. I'm just gonna set an anchor alarm because if we drag anchor right here, we're gonna end up on those rocks. And it's not going to be good. We have got curry tonight. It's very hot. I mean, ooh. I'm going to get clothesline, Delana. I mean, both the curry and the weather. It's very muggy. So I'm probably going to get the sweats with this curry. Dinner, my lovely. The poor boy is sunburnt and is about as red as a tomato right now. How hot do you feel out of 10? Uh, hot, I was trying to think of something funny today but I'm too sunstroked, <laughs> struck, struckered. Greeted by a cow chilling on the beach, I knew I'd like Girolata. Then I saw the burger joint and pondered a connection between the two. A quiet seaside town with nothing but a few old farmhouses, restaurants and an overlooking castle. This is the kind of place you could come to write a book. The world was ending And no one dreamed I saw through the window what others couldn't see. If anyone can tell me what those plants are, just let me know because I've got no idea what they are. And they're 
pretty stunning. Offset by the backdrop, of course. So the boys have gone into shore and they've left me here on the boat by myself. And what I usually do when I'm here by myself is I get really girly and I do all those things that well, I'm going to show you how to make chocolate, that's a perfect example. Homemade chocolate that is good for you, it is healthy, uh, it's my all-time favourite recipe. Um, yes, hooray, healthy chocolate. Chocolate has been my favourite thing since forever, like for as long as I can remember. I don't think a day goes by that I don't eat chocolate. Um, so I was wondering of an alternative recipe, one that didn't have refined sugar and was free of any unnecessary additives. So. This is a very simple recipe, it's only three ingredients. What you'll need is um, cacao powder, agave nectar, coconut oil, and you'll also need a little jar to mix it in, a uh, measuring spoon, and some baking paper, and a freezer. So yeah, you can make this in literally five minutes. So before we go ahead, I kind of wanted to just explain to you what these ingredients are and the benefits that they are giving you. So let's start with cacao. Uh, it is a superfood. It's very high in antioxidants, um, high in iron, magnesium. It has more calcium than cow's milk. Um, the list goes on. So I would go for a raw powder if you can find that. Um, yeah, this is chocolate in its purest form. Agave nectar, it comes straight from a plant. It has a low glycemic impact if you're concerned about that and you can also put it on wounds and stuff like that. But we're gonna eat it today, so. And it's delicious, I put this on my oats and in teas and you know, everything. Coconut oil, yes, this is my life right here in a jar. So coconut oil is high in natural saturated fats which provides you with a good cholesterol and it also helps convert the bad cholesterol that is in your body. Um, it's good for your skin and hair, you can literally rub it in your skin, put it in your hair. Um, and internally too, that also helps um, with blood pressure, weight loss, um, brain function. And I don't know if you've ever heard about oil pulling, but every morning I use a teaspoon in my mouth and I swish it around. It helps kill off some bad bacteria and also improves your dental health. It is really incredible stuff. Anyway, those are the ingredients we're using today. Yippee, chocolate. <laughs> Now this recipe is for one person because it's only me at home by myself, the boys miss out, ha ha ha. So it is one tablespoon of coconut oil per person, roughly. So we're going to put that in. Next I'll use a teaspoon of agave nectar, agave nectar in, and a heaped teaspoon of cacao. Come on, get out of there. Alright, so we've uh, given it all a good mix. This is the part where you taste it, if you'd like it sweeter. Add some more agave nectar or honey. Uh, and we're going to lay it out on the baking paper. And this is when you can add some crushed up peanuts over the top or goji berries or blueberries and whatever it is you want to add. It'll solidify with the chocolate in the freezer. So coconut oil is what's making it go solid. So coconut oil uh, melts in anything above 24 degrees, which I think is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And anything below that, it freezes. So when we stick this in the freezer, it's going to go from this to a solid chocolate bar. It is pure magic. I can pretty much eat this whole thing as it is, but I'm not going to do that. All right. And kind of make it into any shape you want. You can make it into a love heart. I usually just do a square. And you just fold it over itself. There you go. Stick it in the freezer for about five minutes. You can also pour this into like an ice cube thing if you prefer like little ice cube blocks. I've never done that before because I really like, it's like opening a present like this. It's really hard with one hand. <laughs> and then we wait patiently. Alright, let's go. Wow, look at this. And it kind of just breaks off the paper. Seriously, too good for words. Anyway, thank you for joining me with uh, Mayhem in the Kitchen. Matt, you sent me an email, Alona. Yeah, what does it say? So I sent him one saying how he went 22 knots before you made me take a reeve. Um, <laughs> it felt very safe and felt like we were in control to me, the waves were doing all the work. We, ha we did have the full main and solen up in 25 knots true. Then I sent him one, and in the same message I took a photo of later on when we were reeved. I had two reeves because the wind swung around and then we were heading into it and this was when I was more concerned. 
because if you go by the numbers, you're supposed to not have as much sail up as we had. So I had two reeves and three quarters of the solent out, and we had, it says in the book to go uh, to 24 knots of apparent wind, and it was getting up to 28. And um, he said, talking about the downwind stuff, where we got to 22 knots, he, he said, um, sounds rather reasonable to me. The true wind speed doesn't matter that much. It's the apparent which affects the boat and the rig. For example, 30 knots true wind speed upwind means close to 40 knots apparent. You will probably have three reeves and a storm jib, or half the solent. While downwind, the apparent would be 15 to 20. You might be running with full sails up, which is what we were doing. Mm. Um, and then I sent him a few more things, and he said, no, you, I, think you, I think you did it very, very fine. The, the, and then he's talking about the difference between racing and, um, and cruising and stuff like that. Cool. You did good. Reefing when the wind backed a little. Awesome. What did he say about the 22 knots? <laughs> he said you could have got to 25. <laughs> that a boy. So the day we pick up James and Destiny, who are our patrons that we're meeting at the top of Sardinia, it comes into 25 knots and then even 30 knots and then and the next day as well so it's not gonna we're gonna be bunkered down all just hanging out on board probably drinking <laughs> <laughs> Travel should take time With lots of stars Open eyes In coffee shops See the things Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we sail south to Ajaccio, the capital of Corsica. Raleigh gets a little weird with his history and we explore the old town. In your travel magazine Oh!